What's old in the world of Microsoft is new again. Happy Friday, friends. It has been yet another week in the world of the Microsoft. And when I was putting together the notes for the show today, it became really apparent that everything that was once old, especially if you've been hanging around the Microsoft ecosystem for a while, is yet new again. So uh, we'll dive into that here in a second, but kicking things off with the news of the week, Microsoft has acquired yet another company. Now, you might be thinking, and you wouldn't be, uh, you know, wouldn't be remiss if you thought, hey, it's probably a security company, but not this time around. Microsoft had purchased two security companies in the month of July, but in August, it's all back to Teams. Microsoft has announced that they've purchased Peer 5. Now, the way Microsoft is positioning this acquisition, and Peer 5, by the way, is an eCDN. You can look that up if you're not familiar with that term, but it's an, well, it's a CDN, but virtually. And anyways, you can look it up. Um, the idea here is that as people eventually go back into the office and everybody's using all their Teams video chats and all that good stuff, your bandwidth usage is probably going to start to explode. And so that's where Peer 5 comes in, is it is a smart and intelligent uh, internal and potentially external uh, CDN tool that helps map resources and makes efficient use of your bandwidth so that it's not, when when a whole bunch of people are using Teams, it's not crushing uh, line of business applications internally. So Microsoft is really investing heavily into this as they believe hybrid will be the new future. And so as people are inside and outside the corporate firewall, Tools like Peer 5 will make it easier to optimize your bandwidth internally and externally. And every other eCDN that is available on the market is probably sweating bullets right about now uh, because this is a pretty, it's a pretty big acquisition in this space. And I know it ruffled a lot of feathers with other players in that market. So just keep that all in mind. Uh, in the world of Microsoft, printers continue to be a pain in the spooler, quite literally because Microsoft has said, hey, there's another spooler vulnerability and they're working to patch things. And it looks like this has probably been a pretty big attack vector for a long time. And now it's just coming to light that how badly implemented this was. And so if you've got printers, maybe just consider throwing it into the sun because that appears to be the only way to actually secure your environment if you need to have a printer uh, anywhere remotely nearby. There is also a new build of Windows 11 this week. Now, there's not a whole lot changing, but there are some notable updates explicitly with the inbox application. So mail and calendar and calculator have all been updated. I know everybody's been holding out upgrading because of these two, but I'm, I, I kid a little bit. Um, they have been updated to match the design element of Windows 11, meaning rounded corners and everything else. And it does come through the Microsoft Store. So you gotta be checking there along with updating your version of Windows. Also, Snipping Tool is now back to the future. What I mean by that is Snipping Tool is the future. At one point, Microsoft said Snipping Tool was deprecated. And they said, go use Snip and Sketch. Now, I think Snip and Sketch, <laughs> it's still a weird name, is on its way out and Snipping Tool has been refreshed. And I believe I believe that is going to be the future of it as well. And then also announced this week, a little throwback here you'll hear in a second, is uh, Start 11. Now you might remember this name from something like Start 8, which was a start menu replacement, or honestly just kind of a start menu in general with Windows 8 when Microsoft made that little snafu. Then there was Start 10, and now they're back with Start 11. That is by a company called Stardock, and I'll have a little bit more about them in the future. But this is a, it's in beta right now, and allows you to replace the start menu if that is what you're looking to do, or just customize your OS a little bit more. Now, the reason why I said everything old is new again in the world of Microsoft, especially with Windows 11 because let's just kind of walk through some of the news that we have heard in the past couple weeks so we have the xbox app which has been updated and microsoft is once again consolidating everything into the xbox app which is how it originally was but then they had this xbox companion app and they had some other xbox apps now it's all coming back together as one one note they're used to, well there still are multiple versions of one note there's one note for windows 10 then there's just plain vanilla OneNote, and well, OneNote for Windows 10 is going away, and we're all going back to OneNote eventually, once Microsoft creates all the tools and features and, and porting of that. Um, Snipping Tool, which was once deprecated, I believe, and then is Snip and Sketch, is now back together, and now we're back to running Start 11, or at least Start 11 be available in beta if you want to do that. It's just sort of, if you've been in the Microsoft world, and if you somehow, like, got knocked unconscious with, with Windows 7, and then just kind of teleported to Windows 11, you'd be like, man, not a lot has changed. And just like completely glossing over the fact that the, the Windows 8 screw up, um, all the UWP 
fiascos and things that went on with Windows 10. And now we're sort of back into this world of like, hey, you probably could have just gone from 7 to 11 from a visual interface. Um, obviously, I know there's a lot of infrastructure changes under the hood and Microsoft has done a lot of sort of back end work. But from an end user perspective, you could probably go from 7 to 11 and probably not notice too much different. But at the same time, that's sort of the point, right? Windows needs to stay stable, remain just easy to use and what everybody knows. And every time they try to move the cheese too much, they create uh, a little bit more noise than they probably really want. So as I was putting this all together, I was like, eh, you know, it's just all coming back together, except for printers still. Well, I don't know. Printers are still terrible. They were terrible a long time ago and they continue to be terrible, just terrible for different reasons. Now printing isn't as bad as it used to be. It's still really finicky, but back then it was just, hey, printers are just bad to use. Now, now printers are getting us ransomed. Uh, and so fun times all around. Uh, there is a little bit of gaming news this week, just a little bit. I know that there's going to be more gaming news coming here at the end of the month, but the Xbox app now it features cloud gaming, which is a natural home for where it should be. Now, this is only for insiders at this time. It'll eventually roll out, but basically you open up uh, the Xbox app. I should have taken a screenshot and shared it, but I have it on my PC upstairs and you just click cloud gaming and then you can start playing it. It's a much better way. The browser playing in the browser is fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but it just feels a little bit more native, if you will running it inside the app because you can see things like your con con your controller connection, your connectivity. There's just a little bit more data to help to make sure that you have an optimal connection when playing Xbox Cloud Gaming. Microsoft also announces that Gamescom 2021 will be happening at the end of this month where they'll be showcasing a bunch of known titles and updates on what is coming. We're all sort of crossing our fingers that that means, hey, we're going to get some more Halo Infinite information. I think at this point it'd be pretty, I don't know, disappointing if we didn't just because Microsoft or Aaron Greenberg very clearly said, hey, this is an update on titles that have already been announced that are shipping this year. Halo Infinite obviously being the blockbuster child that everyone in the Halo, well, probably the Xbox community is looking for later this year. And so I would expect something from that front. We also got a little sneak peek at Forza Horizon 5. They uploaded a 14 minute gameplay, uh, not really revealing any of the plot or anything else about going on, but really just some, some basic gameplay mechanics. And as one would expect, it looks fantastic. Forza has always been a showcase title for Microsoft and Forza Horizon 5 looks absolutely no different and it looks pretty darn good. Now we'll be waiting to see what all the technical aspects are that Microsoft's going to include, including, I mean, we can, I think we can all expect high frame rates um, and all the, the HDRs and those types of features of the world, but uh, we're starting to get more and more details about Forza Horizon 5 and that might honestly be talked about later this month at Gamescom. Considering they're already starting to show up gameplay, I would hope that maybe we'll hear just a little bit about that. Overall speaking, though, it's kind of a August is always the sort of uh, actually I should say August is always a month where a ton of Microsoft people take time off. So there's like there's always this gap of news and it's sort of a quiet time in the world of Microsoft. But as we end push towards near the end of August, things will start turning around, kicking off, especially with Gamescom. And then we'll have Ignite uh, a few weeks after that. And then we're right in deep parts of the holiday shopping season where marketing and everything else will be spinning up. So here we go. Kicking off questions of the week. As I always say, genuinely my favorite part, Mad Thunder says, I have a rather odd question this week. And I guess the answer is we don't know at this time. What makes a version of Windows 11? So this is an interesting question. So I, I think I know where he's coming from. If you look at Windows 10 and you look at Windows 11, like inherently, yes, the OS looks different, but typically we hear things about like security updates and everything else. But considering how fast Microsoft was updating Windows 10 with, you know, in on paper, two updates for your, I was going to say two large updates, but in the latter half, it's just been one, um, basically one update per year that is adding new features and functionality. And so there wasn't that big traditional gap that we see between uh, like multi years where they're building security features and other tools quietly behind the scenes for three years and then launching in a fourth year, uh, a brand new version of the OS. So what really makes it different? Honestly, I think it's primarily just the user interface. I, I really do. I would not surprise me at all if we find out that the cores between Windows 10 and Windows 11 are exactly the same. Now that might deviate a bit because we know that Windows 10 only has a five year, an additional roughly five years of shelf life before it will be officially retired. So it could just be that eventually these roads will diverge and Microsoft will say, look, Windows 10 is now holistically feature complete and we're only focusing on Windows 11 going forward and that's the end of it. The other interesting thing that as of right now is that we know that there's some artificial limitations on who can run Windows 11, such as the TPM requirements, the Intel 
quote unquote eighth gen or later uh, processor. Those appear to be some of the bigger sort of lines in the sand, but from a technical like feature aspect, other than the UI, it doesn't appear too much. So it's it, when you say what's the difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11, it's honestly as of right now, just the the top level dressing that we are seeing. At least that's how I interpret it. Uh, HR LNGRV says, how about something light? It's been a while since Microsoft's last reorg. Uh, that's a little bit more than light. When's the next one coming and what will it look like? I don't know if we're going to, we haven't seen any big reorgs lately. I think the last sort of change was the leadership of Windows moving from uh, sort of a, a multi-group tenant sort of arrangement to um, basically Panos running most of it. So I don't, I don't know if we're going to see any big reorgs. I mean, Satya has been there long enough that things that the ship is aligned how he has wanted it to be. And so I, I don't think we're going to see any major reorgs unless there's a shift in the marketplace. Uh, at least I haven't, let me put it this, this way. Typically when reorgs happen, it's, it's around early July. Like we, we would have heard about it by now. We haven't heard anything. So I would not expect a major reorg. Sometimes we hear about them like January 1, but typically it's around the summertime that we hear major reorgs uh, in the world of Microsoft. Uh, Joel Reed sa says, uh, I've had a lot of fun playing older games that got the XS uh, X slash S upgrades with graphical improvements or frame rates enhancements, but I noticed this week Minecraft has not received the next gen update. Do you know what the status of that is? I know there were some ray tracing demos on a PC a while back, but I thought there was supposed to be a next gen version for consoles that included ray tracing, draw distance, frame rate, and storage speed improvements. You are right. So there was, if I remember correctly, there were supposed to, there were two updates that Microsoft has talked about. There was initially one they called it like the HD pack. I can't remember exactly, and that got canceled because Microsoft was working on what he is talking about this next gen update. We haven't heard. It wouldn't surprise me if Microsoft is looking. Micro, Minecraft is such a huge title, a massive title for Microsoft that they're going to do a big event for when these updates come out. And so I haven't heard specifically, but this is something honestly I could probably go poking around about pretty easily. And last question of the week, Mr. PKI says, since it was quiet last week, let's end some with some Halo Infinite questions. Ooh, good. Do you think Halo Infinite is on a track for a holiday release based on your testing? Do you think that there's any chance they may release it earlier? And from the and with the last question, please, no BS, please. Oh, he's got one more question. So I do think, well, let me put it this way. Microsoft has to release it this holiday. If it's delayed, uh, that would be a huge black eye for Microsoft. Now, the, re the only reason why there's like a small percent chance that it could, I guess, technically be delayed is Microsoft hasn't given us an official date. They just said holiday 2021. So technically they haven't aligned on a date, although I guarantee internally they have one. And so I, I would be shocked if if it gets delayed just from the, the the black eye that they would take from the media and marketing side of it uh that would be a pretty pretty big deal um from my from my testing do i think it's complete it's too hard to tell i mean the only testing we did i don't think they ever turned on true pvp was just the playing against the bots on a limited frame on a limited scope uh arrangements of maps and so limited uh weapons as well and so it's hard to get a feeling for weapon balancing are all the maps complete and again we don't know really anything about the storyline and that's typically where a lot of the work has to come in right they're cre creating a new plot line new storyline and, and aligning all that is a significant amount of work so that last question of the week from mr pki and he says will halo infant actually be playable on an older console or would only be decent on xbox series x good and interesting question i i mean i microsoft has already committed and said hey it's going to be able to play on an xbox one that's fine so it should run just fine we don't know what sort of eye candy we're going to be lacking because that's where the x and the s really pull ahead isn't that hdr that rdna 2.0 type mentality is where the visual differences are going to be coming in and potentially draw distance i guess depending on how expansive these maps are which we don't quite know yet uh in the world of x or halo i should say um, I think the optimal answer is, hey, if you can get it on the next gen console, that's absolutely going to be the way to go because it's going to play better. It's going to look better. You're going to have a better frame rate. Although you can always remember that the multiplayer is going to be free. So you could try it out on your Xbox one. I think the bigger issue, honestly, for most people is that they want to get a next gen console. They just can't quite literally find them on the store shelves. I mean, at the time when this game launches, it'll be a year post roughly a year. If, if they release it a little bit early, but at least roughly a year since the next gen consoles came out or the i keep wanting to say next gen console but it's current gen consoles came out so uh i don't know we'll see we will see here it's 
I will be playing it on a Series X, if that makes any difference. It's a good question, though. I'll be curious because we already know things like uh, Flight Sim can't run on the older on the older console boxes. You will eventually be able to play them via cloud gaming. At least Phil Spencer has talked about it in that capacity. So I would imagine that there's going to be a pretty significant visual difference here on the Infinite. The only reason I hesitate just a little bit is you got to remember it was initially expected to launch with the console, and that which means that it had to have been playing pretty well on the last gen consoles. But now that it's launching a year later. We'll see uh, what sort of things have happened uh, to make just life better for people or the game better, I should say, in general. So there you go, guys. That wraps it up for the week. A little bit of a quiet week in the world of Microsoft, new builds of Windows, of what an acquisition, but no major news that is shocking or, or rattling the horizon. So as always, make sure to keep it subscribed to this podcast because the only BS here is me.